Hey everyone, uh, yeah, welcome to another dev call. Happy Cinco de Mayo yesterday, um, and Star Wars Day the day before, May the 4th. Um, lovely time, uh, lots going on. So we're, big thing, so layer, we're like in the final push, we're kind of done with most of the functionality. We're just writing a boatload of tests now, and then we're gonna be sending it off to audit uh, within a month. Um, so we're kind of heads down, focused on that. Then at the same time, we also have lots of new chains and, and new people kind of coming on. So we're like being pulled in a bunch of different directions. Um, but hold on, like, uh, I want to go back to layer because this marks basically a year since we started with the concept and the idea to almost being in production. So great job guys. We're like on the last stretch of testing like we're in testing mode but it's it's been one year that's i think that's amazing so great job guys yeah so the crazy idea of launching our own chain and <laughs> moving everyone over is uh we're, we're not even halfway there though the fun is just beginning the implementation was yeah. ready. It's uh, from wait. from idea to actually getting to testing. That's pretty darn good in a year for a whole chain too. Sure. Um, other things uh, gonna post a deep dive today for me. Um, it's with DLT dot link or DLC dot link. Sorry. Uh, yes. Um, DLC is. They, they connect Bitcoin, so they're building like a Bitcoin bridge, kind of like threshold, um, but they're letting you earn yield on actual Bitcoin, which is fun. Uh, super cool project, because I, I didn't know a whole lot about the Bitcoin world and kind of the tech that you can write on there. So um, I definitely learned a lot. And then I'm doing another one tomorrow. This one's going to be super fun. It's a historical one. I'm going to do Augur. <laughs> so for all of you guys that have heard about that one in the past. I'm bringing on Edmund Edgar uh, from, he runs reality.eth. I've had him on, him on before, but he's he's basically gonna be my Augur expert. We're gonna walk over Augur and subjective tokens and kind of the history of them, um, which I'm super excited for. So um, you guys can, if, you, if you're wondering about the whole Eigen debate and everything like that, it needs some historical context for what, what they're building. This will be the episode. Um, speaking of, Bitcoin too. Uh, we're gonna we're up on Bob testnet, uh, and we're gonna be on Bob mainnet as soon as they whitelist us on the bridge, uh, which I'm guessing should be like any minute now. So uh, we'll let you know. Pay attention to that. That that'll be fun. Uh, but if you're wondering what Bob is, it's a Bitcoin L2. Uh, that's EVM compatible. So super cool. All right. Uh, and then other things, Brenda, we're, we have to go over, I, I updated for people looking at sample using Teller. So I had a good time out at ETH Boston last weekend, but was using Teller. And a lot of people don't use Hardhat anymore. So I updated it. Now you can use Foundry. So I have a Hardhat folder and a Foundry folder. And I'm making it so you can use either one for basically Teller examples. And then um, we're, I just have a PR open on that. And then I'm going to go and update the docs to kind of reflect that i guess you could say that you can use I made some updates to the readme um but yeah we'll get together afterwards and make sure that it runs smoothly cool uh a crown of things good uh i guess i don't have uh, much more to add uh, or much more to say but i'm working on layer that's my focus uh, uh so i guess i'll see you guys at one o'clock to talk about more about the stuff that i'm doing Cool. Caleb? Cool. Now that uh, that domain's been switched over to the new instance, I'm going to finish um, going through and checking that my documentation for the AWS testnet is good. Um, and then I'm just going to get back into unit testing. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting with the Oracle module. Um, it seems like the most fun. So that'll be a fun time. All right. 
I'm going through some of the older end-to-end -end stuff and adding more checks for things that should not be able to happen. Are you splitting the files yet? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Just each test in a file. Tim? Yeah, um, I... My, my tests are passing in my PR for layer, um, but I guess that PR is still pending some of those updates from Faku's side. Um, and then I'm also working on my presentation today, unless and I'm open to if anyone, if you need anything else, any other work done. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll get the, the bridge stuff merged in and talk about it. Okay. Cool. Ryan? Going to uh, test out the block explorer with the new instance, um, see if that other issue is now not popping up, um, fix a couple other things on it, and then also, and then dive into the, uh, I want to build that bridge page, the one big button, get the tokens over. Nice. Oh, Tim, did you ever reach out to the snapshot people? Any update? Uh, I talked to them and they were, he, he said he was receptive to seeing if they could do a smaller release just for us. Um, but it sounded like the main problem was they updated some library, which that depended on the new ethers. And that's, that's the problem. Um, Does it really change a lot of our code though? uh it's not real no it, it's just their front end we we're just changing once. an address right yeah oh so. okay. i guess a giant dependency of their front end that dependency updated to the new ethers so that's kind of forcing them to make their front end use the new ethers i guess but yeah we'll see i mean he said he was receptive to finding a solution Cool. Or else, Ryan, you're going to go make a PR. <laughs> Update some meters for him. Anyway. Uh, yes. Spuddy, you need anything? I don't think so. Been working on Telliate. We did a Telliate release on Friday. Uh, lots of new networks and new test nets. All the Goerly test nets are out. Sepolia test nets are in. Uh, working on syncing the node again prism is taking forever to sync uh everybody when I, all the solutions online say things like just use the snapshots but to sync from genesis shouldn't take a week so, so there's something there's something <laughs> i don't know if it's wrong i don't know what's wrong exactly because it's really hard to know what's up when you're trying to sync a node but uh so i'll either try to do a snapshot sync or just check like I'll look and ask somebody if this is going on. They're usually pretty responsive. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, the pocket Discord is great for these questions. <laughs> yeah. Well, who runs Prism? That's Preston, right? Who runs it. Uh, anyway. No. But <laughs> pocket's gonna be <laughs> that helps too much. Pocket's gonna be in DC, so bring your it's question. It's not pocket up. anymore, right? No, the Grove. Oh, that's right. Like Grove that. City. Yeah. Yeah. But it's pocket. We know what we're talking about. They're, they'll be here. So if you want to ask questions, thank right. you. Mike, how's things? Things are good. I feel like we have so many testnet launches recently that they deserve announcements, but typically and we relaunches too. Yeah, there's so much, but uh Usually, we, we usually like mainnet is actually not too far after a testnet launch, unless there's this a lag in getting uh, the TRP token bridged over. Um, anyway, I feel like I should share all that with the world, but um, at least with Bob, I'm going to hold out till uh, till mainnet because that one seems really close. But the big thing on my plate is um, getting uh, this new series that uh, I'm going to put out called. Um, the layer ADRs and uh, 
for those that watch the dev call, you're familiar with these, um, but they're uh, architectural decision records. Records. I know yes. get this wrong. Uh, yeah, but it's a really great way to track all the the uh, the, the um, developmental decisions that these guys have been making over the last few months, um, and uh, it's a. I'm going to put out a Twitter series and a blog series that kind of outline all the major ADRs. And I think uh, it'll be a good way for the average layer um, teller fan to learn about everything that went into layer and even have a deeper understanding of of how it's built and and what went into doing that. So uh, look forward look forward to that this week, if not today it's starting. So uh, yeah, excited about that. Thanks, Mike. What do you mean? Uh, I was going to ask Dan, what happened with the defenders, the Sentinel defenders? How, how did that go? Uh, I still need to do that. Yeah. I, I... Oh, yes. I keep getting uh, messages for mine, um, Dan. So if you want to check what, yes. we, what can be deleted too, because we removed a bunch of the test nets. So Gorley should be all deleted. Hopefully that gives us a few extra spots. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll go through the uh, through the list. Thanks, Brenda. Anything? I think I already gave everything. So. All right. Any questions today, Ryan? Uh, yeah, we had um, community member Jamal tag in on the question from last week from Crypto Scholar regarding the document uh, val how to validate document authenticity. Um, Jamal asked. Uh, how can we effectively verify the, the credentials and expertise of the delegates? Um, additionally, do you think there might be challenges in incentivizing participation and ensuring a diverse representation of expertise across different domains? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can give a stab at it. So th this is going to be... This is one of those things that maybe whenever I talk on my auger deep dive, you guys can go watch, but you know, it, it all comes down to like subject. So like teller in general, like the, the whole idea of an Oracle is like, there's some information off chain, somebody puts it on chain, but if there's a dispute, we basically need to be able to pick the right one. So like, <laughs> you, you know, unlike traditional blockchains where it's like proof of work or like even proof of stake, where it's like very objective, like, this is how the code runs. Whether you're running the code or not, it's instant as far as we can just check and it's done. These are subjective things. And these are ones like who won this football game or what's this price or did this happen? And Teller is one method for say, to coming to agreement on these subjective things. Uh, other systems are like Kleros, which you know has this idea where like, what they would say is like, listen, whenever we have a dispute, do the people who we all vote on a dispute, so we have like our governance split, but they have it split farther. So you would have like these courts to where like you would actually have domain level experts come in and say, okay, you know, like, for instance, if it's, if it's a disagreement on like, like, let's say an insurance payout, like, okay, you know, did this, did this flood happen? You know, so you would actually bring on people that say were local to the area, could come and, and actually verify it, and, and they would be the ones that would do it. Same with a price. You could bring on, like if there's a dispute over price, you could bring on people who actually know about these prices and things like that. Um, and, and there's a lot of pros to that method, you know, in, in the sense that you, you can handle, say, certain things that, that other people might not be able to vote on. So especially like, you know, whenever people are talking like eigenlayer wants to be used for like data availability for this who is able to judge whether or not data you know the, the data is being withheld it's a very technical niche group of people that you would want being those judges um the the pros are, are obvious that that like you, you could potentially have a better vote the hard part about it and the, the reason that we sort of shied away from that is that what we sort of saw going into this was most of these disputes aren't on things that need a whole lot of technical expertise. Most of the time, especially you've seen this in the history of Teller disputes, 
it's almost always 100% obvious what the hell's going on. Um, splitting it out to an expert team is like not necessary in any way that if somebody reports the Bitcoin price is zero, just doesn't necessarily matter. And it allows for faster if you don't do this. Um, you know, basically kicking it off to these disputes makes it relatively slower. Uh, the other one is like, how do you select these is really hard. So you, you could have voting on like, so Claros has like, you know, you, you can vote on, there's some of basically these committees or areas of expertise and you run and, you know, basically you're introducing like a, a DAO system with delegates and, and everyone has these, these different areas of expertise and it gets messy just governing it. Um, even just managing all of these sets, uh, not to mention paying for them is also really hard. So like, if you wanted a bunch of price experts at your disposal to come and settle a dispute, how much do you have to pay them <laughs> in terms of doing this uh, on a regular basis or, or maybe a not so regular basis? And it gets kind of the devils in the details around a lot of this stuff. I'm not saying that, you know, like ideally Teller does move to a system that maybe we have some subsystem that, that can do some of this in the future. Um, just wasn't necessarily our focus. You know, we saw the focus being cross-chain information, price feeds, um, with most of the disputes being relatively obvious things. And, and we kind of built our, our system around that. So, but yeah, great and, question. Sorry. Yeah, they're the ones asking about um, document authentication, right? Sure. Oh, sorry. I mean, that, that's also very difficult. Like, how do you authenticate a document? Is there, a, is there like a government seal? Is there... Like what is it, what what allows anybody, if anyone can access those records and whether or not they're authentic. Like that's that's a very expensive uh, proposition for anybody. It's, are you gonna have to go in person? Are you gonna have to ask? Uh... Well, this would be like what Teller would do. Like, like if you wanted to do like real world assets. So like you could do like bank vault auditing. And so you would actually like you could delegate out powers. So like the dispute isn't handled by everyone. It's handled by like, you know, we actually give it to some big five accounting firms and, and they're going to run the disputes for us because they, they can actually go and, and get access to these people's books in a trusted way. So we would like sort of be delegating authority to them. Um, How expensive would that be? The big five? A, well, well, or any <laughs> auditing firm, you know, but A, it's expensive. B, like how the hell does this actually work? <laughs> um, you know, like decentralized people voting on centralized people. Uh, where where is the attack vector? Where's the decentralization? It gets it gets really hard really fast. Um, so. And very expensive, very fast. But I'm excited to see other people try it. <laughs> so, yes. Put in a bounty. Let's see what happens. Yeah. No. I mean, like the biggest. Or a tip, not a bounty. A tip. Post a tip and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, for us, it's, it's going to be like, how do we, I mean, when, once we launch Teller Layer and we have this system, the next steps is like, how can we create actual good things? So whether it's, you know, how can we make sure our data is the best? That's what I want to focus on. Uh, you know, how do we know that we have the best prices that we have, whether it's the CPI, we have the, the best CPI, we have the best, you know, cross-chain information that cares about forks. You know, and sort of we differentiate ourselves on, okay, this is actually the best data that we're creating um, and people can sort of get get to know it and get to trust it. And, and that's sort of the brand that follows along with it. And then from there, you know, it, it also sort of corresponds with being decentralized. How do we how do we make our reporter set as big as humanly possible, our validator set as big as humanly possible and trade off with UX and speed? It's a challenge, but like that's like, you know, we're sort of jumping on that with every other L1. How do you do that? Um, and yeah, excited to kind of keep playing with it. So that's why we'll we'll have jobs for a while. It'll be fun. Anyway, any other thing? No. Do you need any? No. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, yeah, we'll talk to you all next week. Have fun.